Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everyone remain standing as we ask God's blessing on this morning service. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Loving Father and our God, Lord, how much we thank you for this another day. Oh God, that we could be in your house to lift up your name, to give you honor, to give you glory, to give you praise. Oh God, for all you have done for us. Oh God, we thank you for this privilege. Thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us the mind to be in your house this morning. O oh God, I ask that you will wash us this morning, O oh God. Forgive us of all our sins, O oh God. Blot out our transgressions, O oh God. Lord, help us so that in all our ways that we will acknowledge you. O oh God, help us to give you the praise and the honor which you so richly deserve this morning. Lord, let self not be seen this morning. Oh, God, but your name be glorified this morning. Oh, God, we pray this morning that you will touch everyone in your house this morning. Have mercy upon us, oh, God. Lord, we have no other one to call upon but you. Lord, we have no other friend but you. Lord, you promise never to leave us, neither to forsake us. Oh, God, you are a friend indeed and our friend in need. Have mercy on us this morning. Lord, I pray that you will remember our pastors this morning. Remember Pastor Brown, oh God. Remember Pastor Police this morning. Oh God, remember Pastor Gooden. Oh God, as he away. Oh God, I pray that you will cover he and his family, oh God, under your blood. Oh God, remember Deacon Martin and his wife, oh God. Cover them also, oh God. Lord, help them to look to you by faith. Oh, God, I pray that you will touch, oh, God, every member, oh, God, in your house this morning. Lord, help us that has become, Lord, that you will get all the glory. Help us, oh, God, that we will give you our all this morning. Lord, blend our hearts, blend our mind, blend our voices, oh, God, to lift up praise unto you. Oh, God, I pray that you will bless even your body and your blood, which is presented on the table this morning. Oh God, I help, I pray you help us, oh God, that as we receive it, oh God, that it will be strength for our inner man. Oh God, touch the sick among us, oh God. Lord, remember those that are not well this morning. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that you will cover them under your blood, oh God. Lord, remember those that are still grieving for their loved one. Remember, oh God, those that are still, oh God, in the hospital. Oh, God, those that cannot move this morning from where they are laying down, oh, God. I pray, oh, God, that you will be their comfort this morning. Lord, those that, are, that have no job this morning, oh, God, I pray you provide for them, oh, God. Make ways, oh, God, where there seem to be no way. Oh, God, open doors this morning that are closed, oh, God. Help us, Lord, that we will continue to trust you, oh, God, and to take you at your words. Oh, God, I pray that you will bless today's service. Bless your word as it go forth, O oh God. Lord, let it not return unto you void this morning, O oh God, but let it accomplish its purpose, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you will bless your servant as, he's about, as he prepare himself, O oh God, to, to bring forth your word, O oh God. Help him, O oh God, to trust you. Help him, Lord, to depend on you. Lord, let everything be said and done in your name this morning. Let your sweet Holy Spirit have his free course in our lives, O oh God. Lead and guide us, O oh God. Protect us, O oh God. Keep us from danger, seen and unseen. Help us, O oh God, that as we go out, O oh God, that we will have you with us. Because the songwriter said, I must have the Savior with me. For I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me. O oh God, I pray you remember the babes in Christ this morning. Help them, O oh God, to, to be encouraged this morning. Help them, O oh God, to be strengthened this morning. Lord, help them not only to know your word, O oh God, but to study, to show themselves approved unto you. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Bless and keep, O oh God. Whatever I fail to ask of you, O oh God, I pray you grant it unto us. As I tell you, thanks in Jesus' precious name. Who taught us to pray? Who art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. We continue by singing when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. God, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We'll read for our morning scripture, Isaiah 55. Verse 1 to 13. And we'll read the last verse together. Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and he shall eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a leader and a man of the people. Behold, thou art called a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for a holy one, and for the holy one of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him, while he be his name. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and as it goes from heaven, and returneth not thither, but water it So shall my word, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. For he shall go out with joy, and let it forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the bear shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Praise the Lord. The Lord has his richest blessings to the reading of his holy word. Praise God. You may be seated. Given honor to my God and to his son, Jesus Christ, and to the blessed Holy Spirit, and to our pastors, deacons, missionaries, evangelists, saints of God, little children, everyone here this morning. I thank God for this and other privilege that I can stand before you to exalt the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank God even for this scripture this morning that we can receive salvation without money or without price this morning. You know, his hands are stretched wide open unto everyone this morning. If you're thirsty, he can quench that thirst. You know, if you need him, he's there for you. You know, some, 
somebody might think, you know, someone may be thinking, oh, I don't need him now, but there is coming a time when you're going to call and he will not hear. So if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I want everyone to pray my strength in the Lord that I may continue to be strong in him and in the power of his might. Praise God. I turn the rest of the service over to Pastor Police and the praise team. Praise the Lord, praise God. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord.
Hallelujah, praise God, for I come in with He thought I was worth saving. So he came, paid the price, gave his sacrifice of himself, the perfect Lamb of God, perfect sacrifice for our sins, that can, we can be called the children of God. You thought I was worth saving. Praise God.
Jesus. Thank God for the sacrificial lamb today. Thank God for the sacrificial lamb today. Because of him. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. One time sacrifice. Don't have to kill no bull, no goat, no sheep anymore. And because of his sacrifice, I am free. Hey, glory to God. Somebody ought to give God praise. Just to, just to think about the sacrifice that God has made for us so we could be free. We were bound in sin. But because of his sacrificial death on the cross, we are free today. Because he lived. Hallelujah. We can live also. We don't have to worry about the enemy anymore. Because Jesus Christ had paid the price, the ultimate price for our sin this morning. For those who will seek God will live. For those who will walk in the presence of the Lord will live. For those who will praise God will live. For those that anchored in the word of God will live. Not only that we will live, but we will be in his presence. We will go to eternity with him. That's why he came to pay the price for mankind. Because mankind was doomed to death. Separated from God. And thank God today that we have hope in him. We thank God that we can go to him and ask him for our forgiveness today. We thank God for just praising the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be praised? For all that he did for us, we ought to open our mouth and say hallelujah. We ought to open our mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. For all that he has done for us, we ought to open our mouth and say, Lord, we give you sacrifices of praise today. For all that he has done for me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he has done for me, I don't know about you, but I can testify of what the Lord has done for me. My soul cried out. My soul cried out. My soul cried out. My soul cried out. Soul cried out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I was doomed to go to hell. And God has made a way of escape so I can make it in the kingdom of God. I was like, amen, Mr. Goody Goody. I was in the world at one time. I walk according to the course of the world. I even listen to the enemy. I do the things of the enemy. But when God changes my life, I have the desire to please him. For all that he has done for me, I have a desire to please God. Not letting the enemy steal my joy or deter me from following after Jesus Christ. And that's the desire we ought to have today. You may be seated in the presence of God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. You have purposed us to be here, my God. Father, nothing in our hands we bring, Lord. But God, simply to the cross we cling this morning. Father, we look to you because you alone, oh God, can make a difference in our lives. Father God, when we look at you, Lord, we see eternal life. 
And we ask you, Lord, to draw us closer to you this morning as the word goes out. God, you know, it's not me, Lord, but uh, use me as a vessel this morning to proclaim your word. Hide me behind the cross this morning, Jesus. Let your anointing, O oh God, take over and saturate your people this morning. For the word, O oh God, that will come forth, Lord, is not of mine. But God, it is of you. I am only a spokesperson. Hide me behind the cross. Father, we thank you. We praise you for those that are hearing the word this morning. The word of God will be a lamp unto our feet, Lord, and a light unto our pathway. We are not able to exist, O oh God, without your word. And so, Father, we ask you, Lord, let every heart that hear the word of God, not only, Lord, apply, O oh God, just hear the word, but let them apply the word to their everyday life, O oh God. So we, we thank you this morning, Jesus. In your precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Let us all give God praise this morning. Let us all give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God uh, for being in the house of prayer. We could have been other places. But God purpose has to be in his house this morning. In his house, in his presence, we have pleasures of joy. God gives us the best he had. And his best was Jesus Christ. He gave us eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so this morning, we ought to say to ourselves, we are blessed. We are blessed this morning. I don't know. Sometimes we take life for granted. Sometimes we walk according to the course of this life, of this world. But I hear the Lord saying this morning that it is time to turn to me. And one of the things that God wants us to do is to please him. Hallelujah. We are to strive to please God in every walk of life. I don't know. According to the will of God. That every heart will hear. What thus saith the Lord? I give God thanks for our pastor, our absent pastor today, and his wife, Deacon Martin, and his wife tonight, today. I want to thank God for each and every one, Pastor Police, and her here today. I want to thank God for our musician. I want to thank God for our PA system, our... Um, one that the operator is in the back, amen. We give God, that. let's give them a round of applause, amen. Because they are doing such a, such, such a tremendous job. We don't really talk about them all the time, but they are doing such a wonderful job, amen, making sure the word of God goes out. And we want to thank God for our visitors. We want to thank God for our members. We want to thank God for our deacons. We want to thank God for our evangelists. We want to thank God for our missionaries. And if there are any visitors in the house of God, we thank God for them also. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, praise ye the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. Is he worthy today? Yes. To God be the glory. Great thing he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Today we are going to ask you to stand at this time and we are going to read the word of God. 
And our scripture will be coming from Ephesians chapter 11. And our topic today will be pleasing God through faith. How many today believe in pleasing God? How many of us believe that pleasing God is going to take faith to please God? How many of us believe in that pleasing God is something that we, that God requires? Obtain witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, translated that he should not see death, and was not found. Because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And the sixth verse he said, But without faith, is it impossible to please God, to please him? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May God have his richest blessing to the reading of the Holy Word. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Today we thank God. I wrestle to bring forth a word today. And when I said I wrestle, I went into so many topics and and it seems like what I, what I wanted to do, that was not what God want me to do. And so last night I sat down and God said, this is your message for today. And when it came to me, I was like, how can I put a message, hallelujah, so quick, because I got to preach tomorrow. But it is something that when you have a desire to do what God has asked you to do, it is something that when you have a desire to listen and to follow the instruction of God. And the, the, the God gave me this topic. He says, hallelujah, please in God through faith. The Bible said in Hebrew chapter 11 and 6, the Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you don't have faith, it is impossible to please God. And so we have, I call, I call the patriarch of the Bible. I call them the Hall of Fame. Hallelujah, because they were written in the Bible and the Bible tells us by faith they have accomplished what God has purposed them to do. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the Bible said in the secret, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe 
You have to believe, you have to have, uh, uh, believe in God, that God exists. You can have faith in someone who don't, you don't have a relationship with. You must have a relationship with God. Believe God that whatever God says he's going to do, God will do it. You got to believe him and take him at his word. The Bible said that you, 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 for those who believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon he, him while he is near. Hallelujah. Because there will be a day that comes wherein you are going to seek him and will not find him. Today when we look at the word pleasing God through faith, it is not an easy task to please God. Because there are some things that God is going to call you to do and it seems impossible. It looks impossible. You, some of the things that God calls us to do is we are going to question God and say, God, who? Me. And God say, yes, you. But one thing that I do know, when God calls you, God does not ask you to do the task. God call you as long as you answer and have a willing heart to do what God called you to do. God said, I already done it for you. All I need from you is your willingness. When you have a willing heart, God can use you. When you have a willing heart, God can use you. When you have a willing heart, sometimes you're saying to yourself, Lord, I can't do this. And uh, the fear will come upon you and cause you to say, Lord, I can't do it. But as long as it, it, it may not go the way others want to see you go with it. But God, when God look at you and see your willingness, God said, don't worry about what other people may say. Don't worry about what they may say. All you got to worry about what I say. You see, man will, hallelujah, whose approval are you going to listen to? For you to please God, you can't listen to man. For you to please God, you have to go beyond the, the, the extra mile. Because there are somebody are going to look at you and say, well, you are unqualified. But for you to please God, you have to look beyond what others say. One of the things that Jesus Christ did, and uh, uh, God had made a profound statement, Mother Coleman. When Jesus Christ went to John the Baptist to be baptized of John the Baptist, God made a profound statement. God said this after John, after Jesus was baptized. God said, this is my beloved son. He could have stopped there. But he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So God, when you do what God has called us to do, and you go with, to God with the willing heart, God is already pleased. God, please, you have to, please, displease. Let me slow down a little bit. Please and displease. Saul was one that God gave a command. And when Saul, hallelujah, did not obey God, Saul did what Saul had to do and Saul Blame those who were around him. That what they take, God said, kill everything. Even the king kill him. Saul did not do that. But Saul blamed the people that are around him. You see, you can't blame the people that are around you when God gives you the instruction for you to do it. Hallelujah. And because of that, Saul 
was disqualified. God rejected Saul because of disobedience. When you disobey God, God will reject you. The Bible says Saul was rejected because he was disqualified, did not follow the voice of, Jesus, of God. He did what he had to do, and God said, when he, when he went to Samuel, went to him. Samuel said, well, God, you know, God rejected you. And Saul said, well, the people that were with me, take the sacrifice, they're going to do the sacrifice for the Lord. Lord said, no, I don't want that sacrifice. All I want from you is obedient over sacrifice. There are some things in our lives that God said to get out of your way, get out of your life. There are some things in our lives that God speaks to us to, get, to kill. There are some things in our lives that don't please God. There are some things that in our lives that we think that we are pleasing God, but we are far from pleasing God. There are some things that we do that we say God is pleased with what we're doing. God is saying that that's far from me. Self cannot please God. Flesh cannot please God. Some of the things that we are doing is in the flesh, and the flesh, the Bible says, the flesh are not able to please God. If you operate in the flesh, you are not able to please God. The flesh is contrary to the word of God. The flesh will lead us into destruction straight to hell. But if we want to please God, we have to allow the anointing of God to come in and saturate our mind and bring us conscious to the will of God. And when we do the will of God, when we do what God, all of that God commanded us to do, when we do it, God said, I am pleased. I, he said, I am well pleased. When I do everything for him, his will, when Jesus was going to the cross, the Bible said while he was in Gethsemane praying, one of his prayers said, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass of me. And then he said, Lord, I, 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 can, I can hear him saying, it is not my will. You see, the, 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 will, the, the, the will of the flesh will want to act out. The will of the flesh will always want to do what the flesh want to do. But Jesus Christ said, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And when we are there, God can say, this is my well-beloved children. When we obey God, we can please him. Hallelujah. But the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. In Proverbs chapter 16 and 7, the Bible tells us that when a man way pleases the Lord, he will make your enemy be at peace with you. Your ways has to balance with the word of God. Because see, I'm not able to do anything of my own unless the Holy Spirit takes over. When my ways pleases, when a man ways pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemy be at peace with them. Glory to God. Do you want to please God today? Do you want to please God today? Do you want to please God today? Well, you've got to tell self to get out of the way. Amen. You've got to tell self to get out of the way because if flesh is always want to act out and act out. But, oh, glory to God. But when you Become the humble servant for the Lord. 
He will open up your understanding and your knowledge and your wisdom to him. It doesn't matter what you do for God as long as you do it from the heart. Your heart has to be in God. David, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart. God uses David because David knows if David can attend to sheep, she does not talk back. All she does is knowing how to follow and eat grass. And David took pleasure in leading the sheep. And when God saw David, God knew that this man I can use. Why? Because he have a humble spirit. He is able to do what I call him to do. One of the things that pleases God, you got to learn to forgive. Hallelujah. Let me leave the alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said one of the things that pleases God, you got to forgive. You have to learn how to forgive one another. You have to learn how to forgive, oh, glory to God, even those who seems to be not forgivable. They may do you wrong. Great wrong. But to please God, you may have to go to the person that do you wrong. That's what pleases God. Look at what Jesus Christ did. We were enemy of God. We were so far away from him. We didn't, we, we, we weren't lovable. But Jesus Christ looked beyond our fault and looked upon our needs. When we learn how to forgive one another, we are pleasing God. When we learn how to love, oh, glory to God, we are pleasing God. The Bible said, no greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. When you keep God's commandment, you will lay your life down for all of your friends. The Bible said you got to lay your life down. Sometimes we look at it, at, not literally, but go and help somebody who need help. When you do all of that, God is, God is pleased with what you are doing. It's, not all, it's nothing about you, it's nothing about me. It's all about God. Can I just talk a little bit? Can I just be real today? Hallelujah. One of the things that displeased God, I talk about the please, but one, that's some of the things that displeased God. The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, we have to learn how to love. And when we love, we don't tear down one another. We have to build up one another. That's what pleases God. When we encourage one another, it pleases God. When we don't tear down one another, we fight against one another. We discourage one another. That's what displeases God. The body of Christ must come to unity. When the body of Christ come to unity, come in unity, that pleases God. You are able to work then. You are able to fulfill what God called us to do in the church. But when we tear down, it is not good. We are not pleasing God. That's what displeases God. If I am down, I'm expecting my brother to lift me up. I'm expecting you to help me to, to come up to the, to the fullness where God wants me to be. But you know, sometimes in the church, Jesus, come on. hallelujah, sometimes in the church we put one another down. And that becomes a displeasing to God. It doesn't matter what God calls you to do. If God calls you as a doorkeeper, do the best you can. And sometimes when God calls you, oh, hallelujah, it's not Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me leave the Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. When the church operates in the fullness of God's word, the church can grow. The togetherness, the church can stand. The church can reach the community. The church can be exalted. And God get the praise. And God is pleased with the church. But if we tear down one another, and let me say this, tear down one another. When we tear down one another, we got to stop the backbiting. Lord, can I be real? I'm going to cut out here. We got to stop the backbiting in the church. And it's in every church. You got to stop that. Because God, God displeased with our ways than the way that we operate in the church at times. We thought that we are pleasing God, but God also displeased with what we are doing. And we think that we are pleasing God, and God is saying, no, that does not please me. We can give our sacrifice to God, and, we, and God can reject it. God can reject our sacrifice. What we bring to him, if you're not bringing it with a willing heart, a heart of gratitude, God can reject it. Sometimes we bring our offering to God. We just give it to him any kind of way. God is not pleased. We are in the church. And we have to encourage one another. Areas that one is weak in. The one who was strong are to help to build up. Instead of trying to criticize. He's no good. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Why don't we spend time to help that one? Encourage that one. Encourage that person. That's what pleases God. We spend that time to lift up one another. Please, it's God. But the time we get in the corner and we talk about this one, we talk about that one, this one can't do that, that one can't do that. And God is saying, look at who tell you they can't do it? That's what you think, that they can't do it. But God said, yes. What I call you to do, whatever it is, be the best of it. And don't let no man detour you from doing what God called you to do. This is what pleases God. God said, I rather obedient than sacrifice. We can come to church every day and say, God, I am sacrificing myself to you. And God said, will you not go to your brothers and sister and said, forgive? And God said, will you not feed the poor? And God said, will you not give them clothes to the one that don't have? But we go to church every day and say, yes, I am pleasing God. And God is saying, no, I'm not pleased. There are some things in the church we do that displeased God. And we got to search our hearts. We got to let God come in and search us. And show us our shortcoming. God has to come in and show us where we are going wrong. And teach us how to love one another. Teach us how to walk in the will of God. Teach us how to encourage one another. That's what pleases God. If we don't do that, we come to church every Sunday. If we go back home, we don't remember one another. It's true. To please God, you have to be spiritual minded. Because see, when you are in your own will, you are not pleasing God. Romans chapter 8, 
tells us, I go back to the seats first. He said, for to be carnal minded is death. Romans chapter 8, 6 through the 8 verse. Hallelujah. May not like this preaching today. But you got to hear it. Amen. Hallelujah. Got to tell the truth, right, D? You got to tell the truth the way God wanted to tell it. Are we pleasing God? That's what the question is. Are we pleasing God? Are we pleasing God? That's what it's all about. Pleasing him. We are not pleasing man. And sometimes we please man than we please God. Jesus, help me. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. He said, for to be carnal minded is death. That's the flesh. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When you are spiritually minded, that means when, you, when, when you're spiritually minded, you are being led by the Spirit of God, and God is going to tell us what to do and how to do it, when to do it. These are the people, these are the things that pleases God. You are operating not in the corner of mind flesh, but you now you are operating in the Spirit of God. Why? Because the, the carnal minded is enmity against God. Can't please God. Carnal minded is dead. The flesh, the flesh has to be brought under subjection of the Holy Spirit. For it is not subject unto the law of God. Neither indeed can it be, can be. And the eighth verse, hallelujah, the eighth verse says, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If we operate in the flesh, if we act in the flesh, if we do things according to the flesh, we cannot please God. I didn't say the word of God said it. Doesn't matter what you do. But what's this? You have to be spiritual minded. Not my will, but Lord, your will be done. And we have to get to that point in our lives where that we allow, we allow, we allow the Holy Spirit to work within us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We allow God to work within us. If it is not God, if it is not him who is working in us, then we are just doing it of our own. And that will not please God. The Bible says, Enoch walk. He pleases God. Enoch was living into a world. This was before the flood. And he was living to, into an evil world, just like now. And we see that this world right now are so evil right now. We're in that hate, bitterness, malice, killing, all of stealing, all of that is going on. And the brother Enoch was in an evil world at that time before the flood. But Enoch walked with God. He did not, hallelujah, walk according to the course of the world. But Enoch walked to please God. He did not get attached to the world. He did the thing that pleases God. And God, he was not seen, taken away in debt. But he was translated. Yes, Hallelujah. That's the kind of faith that I want to have. Yes. The Bible tells us about Abraham. Yes. Now we could done here. The Bible said Abraham, when God called Abraham and said, Abraham, offer me your son. 
Abraham had two sons, one with Ishmael and the other with Isaac. But look what God did. God said, now I want you to give me the promised son that I give to you. Abraham could have said to God, he could have said, Lord, why don't you take Ishmael? You give me the, your, the, the promised son that my wife, oh, treasured because she was barren, could not have a son. And when she was in our old age, she had a son. And God said, Abraham, I want you to offer me your son. Abraham did not question God. He could have. But Abraham, I know for that night, he did not go to sleep because he, he wanted to please God. He acted upon faith. Knowing that what God had told him, that he was trusting in God. God said, I will go to the mountain which I will show you. Now, Abraham went, he didn't know, he know the mountain, but he didn't know what mountain he should go to. But God said, when I get there, when you get there, I will show you the mountain. Faith. Is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Abraham did not see, hallelujah, he only heard the word of God. They go and sacrifice your son. But by Abraham being willing and obey God, Abraham went and take two of his younger. And saddle his ass. Take his son. Take his wood. Because he was about God's business. Meaning that if I have to sacrifice. Oh Jesus. Sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to sacrifice the best to God. Oh Jesus. One of the things that we have to sacrifice to God. God. What, look. God. Our time. That we don't want to sacrifice our time to God. Time. Time are very important to God. The same thing with coming to church. Lord, it's the same way when we come to church. When you come into church, we get up in the morning, we get ready, and we go to church on time. We are sacrificing to God, so we have to give God the best we have. God give us the best he had. And God gave us Jesus Christ on time. So we are to get in that practice of sacrificing our time to God. When we time, when it's time to go to church, we go to church on time. We are not going to start the church when we want to. We're going to start the church when God wants us to start the church. Abraham wake, wake up all night. But what Abraham did. Abraham went on to what God had called him to do. And when he got to the place, paraphrasing, when he got to the place, God, he, 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 this is the place you got to go sacrifice the son. The Bible said, Abraham, leave his two younger down in the house and say, okay, I'll go, but I will come back. Abraham took his son and was willing to offer his son to God. That's what pleases God. When you obey him, God will make your enemy be at peace with you. And not only that, but he will make you be at peace within yourself. When we obey God, when we please God, sometimes we don't, we, we, we don't even know what, why we are still here. Because what we did for Christ, he Take us through the problem, sickness, whatever we are going through, finances, job, whatever. Sometimes we wonder, how do we get there? Some of us are struggling. And God is saying, no, because you serve me, because you please me, because you do what I ask you to do, because you've been obedient, I'm going to take you through. Sometimes it looks impossible. But because of what we did for him. Because of how we please God. Pleasing God, that's what we job today. Is to do what God 
call us to do. It may be one thing. Maybe that one thing. Because everybody couldn't do everything. You, that's why God called different people. Some to do this, some to do it, some to pass, some to teach, some, you know. But whatever capacity you are in, whatever God called you to do, even to go and witness to others out there, that's what pleases God. Everything else that we do and will be doing, and if it's not in the will of God, it does not please him. Sometimes we do think that we are pleasing him. But it's not pleasing to God. The thing that we do sometimes, and we say, Lord, it is pleasing unto God. It is not pleasing. Some of the things, yes, we do, it's pleasing to God. But some of the things that we are doing displease God. And those are the things that we have, to, we have to ask God for. To give us, Lord, the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge. Search me, O God, and know my thought today. Try me, O Savior, and know my thoughts, I pray. See if some wicked ways in me, some ways that are displeasing to God. There are some habits that God wants us to break. And God been telling us over and over and over, break those habits. Because they are not pleasing to me. But what? This is people. They would take some of this stuff out and they throw it away. But they would keep some. Just like Saul, God said, destroy everything. The thing that displeases to God, those are the things that we got to get rid of. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us to get rid of them. Those are the things. In our home, in our home, when we come to church, we can please God because, oh Jesus, let me leave it alone. <laughs> we can please God when we're in church. But what is this? Pleasing God is when you're in the grocery store. When you drive down the road. When you talk to somebody who's going through something. When the devil gets you mad. And you tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. That pleases God. But when you get mad and angry and curse people out, that is not pleasing to God. We are representative of Christ. And we are to strive. We are to strive. We are to strive. That's police. We are to strive to perfection in Christ. Not to strive to perfection in my own ability or on my own strength. But we are to strive to please God. We're going to falter along the way. But when you, like David did, David, every time David get up, David, every time David do something wrong, David would get up back and run to God and run to God, God. Uh, I, I, I tried to not do nothing, and God, because God, David said, God said David was a man after my own heart. He would run back to God and ask for forgiveness. One of the things that pleases God, repent, I repass upon you. When we turn our life over to God, when we say, Lord, I have sinned against heaven and hurt. Lord, I am tired of living this life. Lord, I want to be a part of the family of God. When we let him know that God, I want to repent from this life, from the sin that I have committed with a true heart. We can repent, but if your heart is not right, you'll go back out there. But when you repent with a true heart, that God comes what may, I'm gonna hold on to you. That's what pleases God. Amen. You may stand in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our desire today 
is to please God. I can please man. But it's not going to profit me nothing. When I please God, it profits me eternal life. Make me a candidate in the kingdom of God. That's what God wants us to do. God wants us to, let me say, we can do everything else. But until we come to that point in our lives, wherein that we say, Lord, see, I can please my wife. I try to please her. <laughs> but there are times that I don't come up to that point. We all like that in, with Christ. But that's why I said we have to strive to please God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise Let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise Let me hear you say praise the Lord. Let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Let me hear you say glory. Is he worthy? If he worthy, let me hear you say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We are to strive to please God. It may not. Hallelujah. The devil don't want to hear this message. Because I know that this message, it may not go like some want it to go. <laughs> but I want you to know that's what God is saying. And I will be obedient to my God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so today, if you get something, the most important part of this sermon today is to obey God. Obey God. And when you become obedient to him, then you are pleasing him. Obey God. Hear his voice. When he speaks, you follow. And when you follow him, he will. God will. God is not slap. Concern his promise. One of the things that he wants us to do is to be faithful. By faith, the elders obtain a growth report in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there anyone that need a prayer today, today? Or someone may want to turn their life over to Christ? Give Christ a chance in your life. Let God come in. And do what God wants to do with you. I know when he comes in, you will never be the same. He make a change in our lives when we turn our life over to him. You may bow your heads right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Oh God, thank you for the word. The word, oh God, that thou hast given me, Father. We, 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 we thank you. That this word, oh God, even the preacher, oh God, the word goes out and do his work. Father, this morning as we hear your word, Lord, let us apply the word unto our hearts. There are some things, oh God, that you want us to get rid of, Lord, in our lives. Father God, we ask you today, oh God, let us evaluate ourselves and examine ourselves, oh God. And the things, oh God, that are not pleasing to you, Jesus, help us that we may, oh God, get rid of them, Lord. We are not able to get rid of them, Father, but you, Lord, within you, in our lives, oh God, you will point out the things that need to be Oh God, taken away from us. 
We pray today, Father God, that your, your, your spirit, oh God, will come in and help us, oh God, to walk in your divine will and your divine purpose. Father, look beyond our fault today. Look upon our needs, oh God. Wash us in your blood, oh God. Cleanse us from all sin and all righteousness. Father God, give us a desire, oh God, to do according to what you have asked of us. And God, whatever you call us to do, God, help us, Lord, to fulfill those promises, God. Father God, today, for those who are sick in body, there are some today, Father, that are going through, oh God, such a time in their life. We ask for strength. We ask for healing. We ask for deliverance. And so, God, today, as we look to you, we know that you are the divine healer. Father, we are depending on you today. We are hoping in you, God. We look to you, Father, to direct our path. Oh, God, help us, Lord God, to walk humble before you. Oh, God, help us, oh, God, to look to you. And to continue, Lord, to walk with you and please you as Enoch did. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. And we're going to turn it over in the hands of our pastor, Paris. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for the word of God this morning. Reminding us to walk in the ways of the Lord. The way of the Lord. Our ways are not pleasing. Hallelujah. We walk in his way. And we live by faith. Amen? Amen? We live by faith. He taught us that. And to please him, we need to obey him. Yes. Praise God. So let us continue to strive. Let us strive for perfection in Christ Jesus so that when we see him, he will say, well done. Praise God. According to thy gracious word, we're going into our communion. In meek humility, this will I do, my dying Lord. And we do this so we can, we remember him. We remember his sacrifice. We remember his suffering because he did not have to do it. But he loved us so much. He made that choice. And he said, I will go, Father. We need a redemption. We needed salvation, and he made that choice, just like how he gave us that freedom of choice. So we choose, and we choose to serve him. We choose to walk in his ways. We choose to have faith in him. We choose to trust him, and we choose to please him. Praise God. Prepare, prepare yourselves, your hearts, your minds. Praise God. Examine yourself, and we're going to partake. He says, as often as you do this, you do this. In remembrance of me. According to thy gracious word, in humility,
shed on Calvary for us. As we take this emblem, we are reminded that God, what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us, and we are to take it, but to let every heart examine themselves. For those who take it unworthy can receive damnation unto themselves. We thank God as God gave us this chance to make it right with him. And the Bible said, the night when, when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. Gave to his disciple, and said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat, you do show the Lord's debt he come, eat ye all of it. Amen. And in the same night, hallelujah, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he said, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you drink, you do show the Lord's death and 
to me comes. Drink ye all of it. Is it good? It's good. Somebody else says, thank you, Jesus, for his goodness and his grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may repeat after me. Raise your right hand. And when these failing lips grow down, and minds and memory flee, when thou shalt in thy kingdom come, Jesus, 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 remember me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Raise both hands toward heaven. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Both now and forevermore. Let all of God's people say, Praise, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Lord. We turn it over. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood. Save me. One day when I was born.
since Jesus made me whole. Some people don't understand it. But this one thing I know. Uh, it's a bubbling. It's a joy I'm talking about. It's a bubbling. The peace I'm talking about. It's bubbling in my soul. Praise God. It's offering time. Praise God. The Bible says when we come into the house of the Lord, we bring our tithes and offering. Our tithes is 10% of our first fruits. Praise God. That's your gross earnings. And so we give to the Lord as he commands. Praise God. And then our offering, he leaves that up to us. And we give because we love him. We give because we love him. Amen. Praise God. We can't. Thank you for joining Emmanuel House of Prayer this morning for our Sunday worship service. We hope and pray every song, and most importantly, the word of God brought forth today was truly a blessing to you and your family. If this is your first time joining us, we currently have prayer meeting Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Please enter meeting ID. 436-337-528. Bible study is every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Zoom as well. The meeting ID for Bible study is 704-868-378. Please enter password 3333 for all Zoom sessions. And of course, if you are physically unable to join us, we live stream every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. here on Facebook or EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash stay connected. If you are in need of prayer or searching for a church home, we here at Emmanuel House of Prayer would love to pray for you and would welcome you with open arms. Join us on our website, EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash contact us. You can always visit our website, Facebook page, or Instagram for weekly church announcements and community news. Also, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for free, Emmanuel House of Prayer FTL where you can view all past Sunday morning worship services. And lastly, tithes and offering may be mailed to the church at 2820 Northwest 7th Court, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33311. God bless you all. Stay safe and stay connected.